In this video, we'll be going over seven different ways of teaching a variety of subjects and skills using binoculars. So let's get started. I see you. Hello and welcome to Eco Elsa. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Elsa and I make videos about the outdoors to help you and your kids get outdoors. So, today's video we're going to be talking more about binoculars and all the different subjects and skills you can learn while using them in your classroom or at home. So I hope you enjoy this. So that being said, let's get started. Number one, biology and science. When you go outdoors, you can keep a phenology chart or journal, keeping track of what animals and things you see outdoors. And you can do a lot of this using binoculars to help you see things farther away and to see a lot of different behaviors um, being exhibited in animals that you might not actually see if you're up really close by them. Additionally, when you're learning how to use binoculars, you're actually learning how to use a scientific tool. And this is actually a standard in many different curriculums around the world is learning how to use scientific tools. So you can check that little box off when you teach your students how to use binoculars. Number two is physics and engineering. Now, I'm not a scientist who specializes in physics or engineering, but there is a lot of really cool things going on with binoculars and how they allow you to see an object up closer. It's a combination of lenses, one lens to bring it closer, but it actually flips the object upside down in your vision, and then a second lens that writes the object the right side up and brings it closer as well. As well as modern binoculars, these big hunking ones have prisms inside them, which help with a a lot of other really cool things. So there's a lot of physics, real world physics examples you can use binoculars for. Additionally, you can do engineering type experiments with binoculars. You can have your students using magnifying lens try and see if they can create their own telescope or aka half of a binocular. Since, as in a previous video, I talked about how binoculars are really two telescopes put together for one for each eye. So that way you don't have to do this. Number three, history. Now what's really cool about binoculars is technically when the first telescope was discovered, it was discovered by a bunch of children. That's because in the 1600s, there was a guy who was a spectacle ma maker, or aka a guy who made glasses for people, and he had some children and they were playing with some of his lenses. And they discovered if they looked at an object far away using a lens, that object would appear closer but flipped upside down. And then when they added a second lens in front of the other lens, the object would become closer and right side up. Now this information of course got to Galileo, and the rest is kind of history. Hence topic history, huh? So this can be a really cool one to show your kids because it actually shows them the contributions children make to history and to science all the time. And they can feel real empowered by that and think it's really cool. And it's a great way of introducing history in the 1600s in Europe, as well as history about the sciences and Galileo. It's endless, endless opportunity. History everywhere, all around you. Hopefully like nature. Number four is reading. Because there's a lot of great books out there that are about binoculars or include binoculars in them, and they're really fun to read. Link in the description below. As well as binoculars provide a unique opportunity to make reading a more fun and exciting activity with your students. You can do this by placing books across the room or across a far distance, and then have your students try and read the books using their binoculars. Huh? So it's really fun to do. And the kids will feel challenged and they'll also be reading and it'll make reading more fun. And it's kind of like what more you could ask where the kids are reading and they're learning how to use binoculars. So cool, I suggest trying it. Number five, a game for developing skill. You can play I Spy with binoculars. It's really a fun game to play with your students, as well as it helps them develop skills for using the binoculars, as well as some other beneficial skills like communication, giving good descriptions, playing cooperatively. It's endless, and it just it really is a fun way of introducing binoculars to your students before you have them start trying to look for specific animals out in nature, moving around, doing their thing. 
so I highly recommend playing this one because it's a good one. Number six is a game for developing teamwork and many other beneficial skills. This is the more advanced version of I Spy for your students. What you do is you have your students in teams or pairs and what they do is one person picks an object and they must give directions so that everyone else can try and find the same object. You can play this as a point system or however you want. The main point of this is teaching your students to give good descriptions so that everyone else around them when they're out in the field and they see something cool can find whatever it is they're looking at. It is a great skill to learn for when doing research outdoors but it also teaches a lot of other things like teamwork, cooperation, and good communication skills. Students will learn how to be more specific and concise in their language so that other students can find whatever it is they're looking at quicker. And finally, number seven, bird-themed exploration cards. Exploration cards are cards that have a guided exploration thing that your students need to do when outdoors. It's a good way of getting students exploring out of their comfort zone, but also still kind of on focus with whatever it is you're learning about outdoors. You can do bird-themed exploration cards that also include things like using binoculars so that students can continue to learn about birds and also develop more skills when using this scientific tool. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and got a lot of great value out of it. And now you have all these activities to use binoculars for in and outside of your classroom. Go ahead and click subscribe right below as well as make sure to ring the little bell button if you wanna be notified the second my videos are up on YouTube. Click the description and follow the link to join my email list. Cool thing about joining the email list is you'll receive a monthly newsletter for free full of tons of resources to help you and your kids get outdoors as well. And if you're still looking for books to read with your binoculars from across the room, go ahead and click the description below and find those links to a couple different blog posts I have about tons of different books that'd be awesome to use binoculars for reading, but also to learn more about birds, as well as links to all my different social media accounts where I post tons more resources about the outdoors and getting outdoors. So I check that all out. That way you have all these resources to use for your classroom or for your kids at home. Now, as always, I hope you all have a fantastic week. You be safe. Learn lots, have fun, and get outdoors. Bye. It's fun chilling with ya. Cold. <laughs>